And you know what I'll say? Look at this, this is where the birds land. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking water. at the geology of it all. I want to be 500 in a thousand square, or five, wait a minute. <laughs> what did I say? We're in Des Plaines, Illinois. We're at a cemetery, All Saints Cemetery. I'm with Ed Ballou. I'm with Ed Ballou, <laughs> our longtime Chief Sustainability and Director of Field Research. I'm Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. This is the first time I'm featuring a cemetery on living the aquascape lifestyle. I don't know if that would be the right word, living the aquascape lifestyles at a cemetery. Maybe enjoying the aquascape Absolutely. lifestyle. Absolutely. This has been a great project for us. We did it well over a decade ago. It's amazing the amount of activity and the type of peace that it creates for everybody that's here. That, that is talk, the Aquascape lifestyle. That is the Aquascape that's lifestyle it. for the relatives. And, Absolutely. And it makes it makes them feel good when they said like it was a fisherman and this is a place that, wow, awesome. look at this. <laughs> Check out this water. Plots are literally right up adjacent yeah, to the water. Completely different. Before, mm -hmm. when we originally built it, it was just that structure over there. I think as people are starting to enjoy the space, they want to utilize it. I mean, yeah. this is great. I mean, it's a beautiful garden. If you want to come visit a loved one, why not come visit a loved one and be able to relax and feed the fish, be able to experience a relaxing and peaceful place. I think there's a lot of cemeteries out there that would benefit from the lifestyle, not just the people that are going to be buried there for eternity, but for the families that are going to come and yeah. mourn and celebrate the lives of their loved ones. I agree. one of the reasons that Ed is the director of field research. This is one of the very first intake bays to design. The reason for this was in this type of an application, we knew we were gonna have tons of traffic, lots of people coming in. They can't maintain it on a daily basis because it's a big pond. Yep. They're not gonna clean out the skimmer. So I'm like, well, why don't we create a little pocket, a little bay off on the side, so all the debris gets sucked in there. They could maintain it once a week, every other week. Um, we have a big pump down on a snorkel centipede. Yep. We now use our new pump valve. That's going down in the bottom. That just feeds that big volume for the waterfall. The pumps that are in the skimmer are actually feeding the wetland filter. Yeah, so it's a grande skimmer. Yep. Okay. That sucks in the debris off of here, and so if they don't get to it, it'll still run because we got a pump here and a pump here. This was one of the very first intake bays, and now on every large project we do an intake This is what bay. we do. So we have the wetland, but one of the keys to a healthy wetland is you don't want too much water flowing through it. We wanted a dramatic waterfall. We don't have all the water going into the bottom. We only have one pump going into the bottom that's being fed off the skimmer system. That runs 24 hours a day. There's a second pump that comes in from behind those boulders yes. that adds just volume to get the desired effect. I see the water flowing in there where the yep. second pump is. Yep. And what's neat is you can literally see the roots of the plants that are part of the filtration system here. Yeah. It's the rocks and gravel, the roots, how does it all work? With all of that rock and gravel, we have the interstitial spaces between the rock and gravel. Interstitial spaces. <laughs> That's where the magic happens. Spell it. <laughs> I-N-T-E-R-S-T-I-A-T-I-A-L. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what happens is with all that rock and gravel, we have that open space in between. The rock and gravel uh, becomes home to the microorganisms, but it also allows that water to flow through and it provides the habitat and the open areas for the roots to go down. So we have the roots coming down, they're in contact with the gravel, which is also in contact with all the microorganisms. They work symbiotically together. One breaks down the fish waste, turns it into the plant food, um, creates nitrous uh, oxide, goes up into the atmosphere, etc. So all this different stuff is happening. It's super simple, but highly complex. How does someone estimate the size of a wetland for the amount of water needed to be filtered? The challenge is the size, the surface area. Typically what I do is I'm gonna be between five and 10% of the surface area of the pond. So if I have a thousand square foot pond, I'm gonna be approximately a hundred square feet for my wetland. wetland. What's interesting, if you know what's running properly, you're gonna see water popping out from everywhere. So the water is actually coming out from these big boulders because 
we're, we're uh, discharging the water into the bottom and it spreads out evenly and we have this gentle flow coming up over the entire surface area. So that's the key. This little mulm layer over here, this is basically like a really fine sediment. It's, it's the residue that's left over after the decomposition process. There's actually nothing to it. I mean, literally, you put your hand in there and it just floats away. It's, it's, if you tried to filter it out, very, very difficult. It's healthy. There are different microorganisms that will feed on that stuff. So it's all part of that ecosystem process. When people want to clean their pond, I always say leave the area up here in the, in the filter because that's important. It's doing its job. We might want to take it out of the pond, but up in here, it's good, it's normal, and it's healthy for the overall aquatic ecosystem. that I mean it's really subtle type stuff so we could literally create music with waterfalls so we could tune it like you're tuning any instrument we have water falling at different heights different thicknesses of water falling into different depths of Depth water, of water yeah. we have treble sounds we have bass tones when Echo you mix chambers. them together it just creates that really soothing sound I mean my gosh yeah this sounds like you're on the woods somewhere I mean it's beautiful I want to contrast this listen to the sound here and let's go check out the, uh, the sound of a traditional fountain all right, we kind of have to talk loud in there, and we were just commenting, this is a mausoleum. It's a traditional way of doing it, though. I mean, that was there existing, you know, but that's mm -hmm. exactly why they wanted to create this. Nice contrast. It is. So you can hear the sound. It's almost overwhelming. This is the kind of sound that we like. Over all, over all those boulders. It's a completely different feel. And the other thing is, look how sterile it is. Beautiful. I mean, I love architectural elements yep. like that in the right setting. This is a living garden space. Completely different. This is a probably an 80 foot long by 20 foot uh, wide water feature with probably another 20 feet of waterfalls and a upper a wetland filter. Yep. An installation like this might run around 100,000. A marble installation like that, a million. Probably about a million dollars. <laughs> So it's literally 10 times the amount for a traditional fountain than a natural ecosystem water feature. So unique stop, a little bit of a different stop, but a relaxing stop. This is a different angle of living the aquascape lifestyle, but it's sure good to see the contrast between a traditional fountain and a natural ecosystem pond. So we are actually at another cemetery owned by the same company in Hillside, Illinois, about 30 minutes from um, yeah. All Saints Cemetery. Our guys were here not even a week ago, <laughs> no, days. four days ago, <laughs> and they did three water features, all fountainscapes that they wanted for this this mausoleum, and it's a it's a incredible mausoleum, and just that statue over there is yeah, amazing. It is. We got our spillway bowls over here. So these are just set on an aqua basin. So we have an underground reservoir over here that houses the pump. Yep. Um, and then what we have is we're just simply pumping water into this nice little vessel up on top. We just created that little spout coming out of it. But it was just our standard uh, uh, patio pond yeah. that we put a notch into, converted <laughs> into a spillway bowl, and then eventually designed one with this really nice finish exactly. over here. So now we have these combining different bowls. And uh, once you have these, you could add more bowls to this. I mean, yes. 
the possibilities are endless. You could add aquatic plants to it. Um, these could fit anywhere, but I love this. It's a very simple, yep. subtle design. You know, it's not overwhelming. Again, look at all these little spaces they're gonna have around it. So each one of these areas, individual design, and it's gonna to call to different people. Yep. Each one of them That's has right. a different feel. Well, well, okay, so you've got this one, which is right outside the driveway, yep. and then you walk over here, we got the Mongolian basalt rocks. same construction method yep. with the aqua basin down below yep. but in this one we have Mongolian basalt rocks that actually come from guess where Mongolia <laughs> uh, interesting things about this rock this is known as a mafic stone mafic stands for magnesium and iron so it's got ferric oxide in it which gives it that reddish brown color used by uh, geologists and things but what I want to point out is look at the tight grain structure in this stuff and that's because it's an igneous rock that came to the surface and it cooled real fast so it doesn't have like crystals and stuff like that. If you look at it from above, it actually looks crystalline in shape because when they cool, like if you get this big mass of magma that cools, it shrinks and it cracks and it creates these hexagonal It is pieces. really cool. It it's is. very, very cool. I well, love the unique. geology about this stuff. It's awesome, but I love the different type of stone, the color. I mean, uh, these things super, super durable. They can handle the winter, the summer, the heat, the, uh, everything. And they, they make a statement. Wait, there's more. There's one more feature. This is my favorite feature here. All right. Everybody can have their own feature, just like you said, and it's probably going to be where the families choose because, once again, these are going to be plots. I just love the sound of a small, pondless waterfall. So this is actually a new product that we have out. We'll actually put a link below if you're interested in doing this yourself. But just a small little waterfall yep. like this and listen to that sound. It just fills the space. If I was going to be buried anywhere, it would be next to a pondless waterfall, natural. Which is your favorite? Why don't you tell us of the three, whether it's the Mongolian basalt rocks, whether it's the spillway bowl, whether it's the natural uh, waterfalls, which one that you would actually like to spend eternity with. So this is built, this is built the exact same way. So the bowl goes down here and look yep. at how many rocks. Let's count them. 16 rocks. Yeah, and these guys here, yeah, 200, 250 pounds a piece or so maximum. Yeah, the, the, so a homeowner could do this over a weekend. Absolutely, the, the hardest part is digging the hole. Yep, <laughs> just to give you a perspective, three professional contractors, we had three guys out here. In one day, they put in all three features. Whether it's a established pond for 13 years like the yep. other one, or even the small little spillways and the small little fountainscapes, this is living the aquascape lifestyle. It's showing the breadth and depth of our product range, yep. and they can go anywhere. And you know what? I think every cemetery needs a sound of water. Good job, Ed. All right. Hey, if you like this stuff, like, comment, and subscribe, and follow along as Ed and I journey living the aquascape lifestyle. I love my job. Yeah.